Alright, so um, before we start the video, thank you. We just hit 400 subscribers and I am just so grateful. My goodness. Um, wow. Um, before we start, <laughs> big shout out to all of my classmates. Uh, my classmates in school and even my school advisor. It's because, so do you know those videos that looks like tech talks that are in facebook um they call them you facebook reels so i made a facebook reel with my little cousin rain um i remember i remember t telling him hey can you tell the people um in facebook reels to subscribe to my channel you know just for fun <laughs> and let's see what's gonna happen and he agreed and he did it i made a video i kind of edited it edit the video a little bit but it was okay it was still normal and i i placed the link my youtube link in the comments of the of the facebook reel and surprise surprise the next day i mean was it the next day yeah the next day because this actually happened um wednesday and um around thursday uh, it was just a normal, normal, cla normal class. It was just normal day. My advisor, she, she was talking about. We're talking about because it's AP um, economics, and um, we're talking about uh, was it gender roles and uh, other stuff. She mentioned my channel. Yeah, she mentioned my YouTube channel, and I was like, whoa, what? How did you know? Wait, huh? <laughs> so after that, after her mentioning and telling my classmates that I have a YouTube channel, they started to, you know, they started to subscribe. They started to um, check out the channel. And to be honest with you, I don't care if they're laughing at me, they're giving me watch time. So thank you. But thank you for the people that subscribe too. And anyway, so I saw the two uh, two comments in the last part where um, there's one comment there telling me to try uh, reacting to oversimplified ne ne uh, Napoleonic Wars. We might do that after this and after that, um, uh, I don't know, maybe we can continue the Voices of the Past series and the World War One Seminole Tragedy one. And uh, after Oh, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, um, thank you for the other comment for adding some information about this because it's, I'm a learner, okay? I'm a histo history learner. I don't consider myself historian, but if you want to call me a historian, sure, you can call me a historian. I'm sorry for a three minute intro. It's because I'm scared of copyright, you know? I'm scared, I know reaction videos is getting a little flag nowadays, you know, because they're the people that made this the original content is starting to uh to copyright the videos and uh, i just started the recording so we're back part two we might finish this series today so thank you for the support we are now 400 subscribers thank you i'm just surprised and yeah the grind is still continuing anyway let's go The first euphoric phase of the European revolutions becomes known as the springtime of the peoples. With censorship relaxed, there's an explosion in the number of newspapers, among them Cologne's radical new daily, Neue Rheinischer Zeitung, edited by Karl Marx. Karl Marx, a very well-known man. Um, he's well-known to influence, uh, influence people in the Soviet Union and I don't know much about Karl Marx but we might try to react to more videos about him in the future so yeah folks maybe it feels like the dawn of a new era but these early successes are built on the back of an uneasy alliance as Marx is quick to highlight middle-class liberals want constitutions more inclusion in politics and a free press workers who in the comment last video uh, someone mentioned me uh, 1848 was just a most casual year just a casual year in history 
um, some of the things that was passed in this year was just removed in a few years but remember after like 1848 um, there's gonna be like uh, I forgot I don't know much about this timeline but I I my guess maybe after after like in the round 1848 a war will happen between uh, Fran France and Prussians if you're wondering what Prussian Prussians are Prussians are Germans nowadays uh, Prussian is like the massive kingdom in in Germany and this is before the unification of Germany you know uh, the unification of the German Empire and now after like the German uh, Frank Franco Prussian war we're gonna we're gonna see World War one but I still don't know much about this so comment down below any information that you know about this year and about this uh, era. Who are the revolutionary foot soldiers in many cities want cheaper food and the right to work. Right. German radicals sum it up with a neat pun. Freedom to read versus freedom to feed. Europe's new assemblies are under pressure from conservatives who think they're going too far and radicals and socialists who think they're not going far enough. Most horrifying of all to Europe's middle class. In every debate, there's always there's always two parties, um, uh, maybe even multiple parties. But it's surprisingly, it, it, it's, it will be a surprise if all of them will agree on something. Just in some uh, in in one subject, they agree something. That's gonna be a surprise. So, yeah. In every every debate, there will be multiple parties. And yeah, we, can, we can't remove that, but it'll be, it's very rare to have a majority, or let's say all, all of them will agree on something, so let's go. Us. There hovers the threat of mass direct action, social revolution, the mob. The mob. Bread or lead, bread or lead, rallying cry of Paris workers, June 1848. In the wake of the revolution, France's provisional government had set up national workshops, a public works program to alleviate unemployment in Paris. But just three months later, a new, more conservative government announces their closure. 100,000 workers are suddenly jobless. The response is immediate and furious. Over three days in June, Paris radicals take on the middle-class National Guard and regular oh. troops in a bloody battle of the barricades. The Archbishop of Paris attempts to mediate, but is cut down in a crossfire. Actually, I love looking at old photos, and actually, there's actually a photo of something that, that actually that is part of this rally or this, this event where you can see the barricades barricades with with chairs wooden chairs anything just to block the roads and there there will be like um fights obviously um yeah let's go i hope i hope uh epic history tv oh yeah by the way this video will be in the description down below this is channel will be this is epic history tv uh <laughs> the, the, his channel link is in the description down below i'm very very sorry oh god please please don't copyright this anyway um, I hope he show, shows a photo of it. I hope. This remarkable. Oh look! Oh look! I knew it. There we go. <laughs> I'm sorry, folks. Look, wagon. That's a wagon. That's a wheel of a wagon. You see that? Those are rocks. If you look at that, and of there, yeah, that is that. That looks beautiful. I love looking at these pretty photos. Anyway, let's go. Early photograph shows some of the Paris barricades fought over In that Rose, summer. Spain. 1848. Ooh. By the time it's all over, General Cavagnac's troops have killed at least 1,500 workers and arrest 12,000 more, a third of whom are deported to Algeria. He Algeria. believes he has saved France from anarchy. The sacred cause of the Republic has triumphed, he declares. Well, I don't the know. The French I'll, Revolution so. has split between left and right, with bloody consequences. It paves the way for the return of a famous name from the past. Wait, promising Napoleon? unity and order. Napoleon. 
he looks like he looks so familiar. Three days of blood will give us thirty years of peace. Joseph Gadet Garet Radetsky von Radetz, Austria, Aust Austrian field marshal. That spring, conservative governments had been caught off guard by the speed of events. Napoleon the Third. Now they I, begin I, I to hope fight so. back. I'm right. In Prague, Czech students clash with troops. The wife of Austrian commander General Windisch Gretz is killed by a stray bullet. He responds by withdrawing his troops and bombarding the city's old town with artillery. That is devastating. 43 are killed before the students surrender. Violence. In Italy, King Carlo Alberto of Piemont Sardinia has declared an Italian war of liberation against Austria and invades Lombardy Venetia. He is supported by the other Italian states and nationalist volunteers, including the Italian Legion, led by professional Giuseppe revolutionary Garibaldi. Giuseppe Garibaldi. Austrian Hello. forces in Italy are commanded by 81-year-old Field Marshal, Field Marshal Radetzky, Radetzky, a distinguished veteran of the Napoleonic Wars. Vienna orders him to negotiate. Instead, Radetzky wages a masterful campaign, fending off the Piedmontese advance, then launching a decisive counterattack. Costosa. Piedmontese forces retreat in disarray. Carlo Alberto negotiates a truce. That summer, Johann Strauss composes the Radetzky March to celebrate the old general's victory. That is amazing. Meanwhile, Austrian relations with Hungary are in crisis. The country is now That's effectively independent, with its own elected parliament and a prime minister, Lajos Batyani. But not everyone wants to be part of the new Hungary. Savage ethnic conflicts break out between Hungarians and Romanians in Transylvania and Hungarians and Serbs in Vojvodina, leaving thousands. Transylvania, uh, let's see, let me think, uh, I need to pause it. Um, someone very, very uh, famous or infamous, uh, Vlad the Impaler, right? Am I right? Vlad the Impaler from, was from Transylvania. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Vlad the Impaler. If you don't know who that is, I'm gonna probably react to him maybe in the future. Yeah, Vlad the Impaler. I'm sorry. I just, I just remember when I, when I, when I saw this name, Transylvania, because Vlad the Impaler was actually. Um, was actually, uh, let's see, was inspired by making uh, Dracula. You know, was it really Dracula? Right? Yeah, Dracula. There we go. Anyway, let's go. It's dead. An even greater threat is Croatian General Josip Jelacic, a fire-breathing imperial loyalist who takes matters right. into his own hands and invades what he regards as a renegade province. The Emperor still hopes for a peaceful resolution and sends a loyal general, Count Lamberg, to take command of Hungarian military forces. Okay. But on arrival, he's brutally murdered by a mob. Oof. That's Appalled, good. the Imperial government declares war on the Hungarian revolutionaries. This, in turn, outrages liberals and radicals in Vienna. There is fresh violence on the streets, and the Austrian Minister of War is lynched. Troops lynched? evacuate oh. the city, while the Emperor flees to Olmutz. Jelacic marches to the government's aid. He joins forces with Windisch Greats outside Vienna, and together they bombard the city. Then they attack. The October Rising is crushed with the... So this is a very, very tragic year. So, so much tension, so much, so much, uh, let's say, uh, destruction that is happening around Europe at this year. My goodness. I'm sorry, but this is the first time for me to learn about this. And it's, I, I'm starting to love learning more, his, more Europe, your, uh, his, 
your European history. There we go, European history. And maybe in the future we might react to some history um, in maybe in Asia, maybe in Africa, or maybe in America, in the future. Anyway, let's go. A loss of 2,000 lives. 25 revolutionary leaders are executed, including Robert Blum, a member of the German parliament in Frankfurt. He becomes a celebrated martyr of the revolutions. A martyr. With Vienna secure, the Austrian invasion of Hungary can begin. The Hungarians are heavily outnumbered. Galicia. Budapest falls, and the Hungarian government evacuates to Debrecen. We now have 40,000 men in and around Berlin. Order in Berlin and we shall have order in the country. Major Helmut von Moltke. Wait, he, does, he sounds so familiar. Have, have I? Have, have I? Learned about Mr. Major Helmut von Moltke yet? Or maybe he has a son or grandson. I don't know. That is a general too. I don't know. I, it's just, the name is just so familiar. Let's go. Order in the country. Following the violence in Berlin that okay. March, the King of Prussia withdraws to his palace at Potsdam, on the Frederick outskirts William of the, the city. Fourth. Here he is surrounded by loyal troops and conservative advisors, including a 33-year-old aristocrat. Ah, a Prussian aristocrat, Mr. Otto von Bismarck. Wow. Hmm. This man in the future will make, or let's say, will make Germany unified. Will unify Germany. I'm, I'm just saying this because he's a very important figure in German history. Otto von Bismarck was an amazing politician, even if he had he had mistakes, because people is, people are are not perfect. People make mistakes too. And he's a ma he's an amazing politician. He's good at dipo he's good at diplomacy. And yeah, I'm I'm just I love learning about him. And I'm I ha I found a series about Mr. Otto von Bismarck made by uh, who was this uh, Extra History. So we may actually uh, react to that. I know I've mentioned that series multiple times now, but I'm just so excited to react to that. So anyway, let's go. Rat named Otto von Bismarck. When asked for his view on what should be done, Bismarck says nothing but leans over to a piano and taps out the march of the Prussian infantry. The forces of conservatism are strong in Prussia. There is deep loyalty to the state and the king. Allies, like Bismarck, adopt the enemy's tactics, launching conservative political organizations Very and newspapers poor to mobilize this support. New Prussian newspaper. By November, King Frederick William has noted the infighting of his opponents, and the defeat of the Vienna Revolution, and decides to act. Cologne. He orders General Wrangel to lead 13,000 troops into Berlin. They enter the city unopposed, and order the Prussian assembly to disperse. It has no option but to comply. Prussia will get its constitution, but it is one handed down by the king, under which he retains full executive power. Prussian dreams of a true parliamentary system, even a republic, are dashed. In December, two new players take the stage, who will play key roles in shaping the fate of Europe's revolutions. In Vienna, Emperor Ferdinand abdicates in favor of his 18-year-old nephew, Franz Josef. Franz Josef. He will reign until his death in 1916. Oh. 1916? In Paris, Louis Napoleon Bonaparte. Ah, Mr. Louis, there we go. Louis Napoleon Bonaparte, there we go. Yep, the Bonapartes. <laughs> They're back yet <laughs> again. Um, so, I don't know. What I'm seeing in France is history. The Bonaparte always uh, shows up in, in history. Uh, Napoleon Bonaparte. But hey, I'm, I'm just correct me if I'm wrong, but let's go. Nephew of Emperor Napoleon, 
is elected President of the French Republic in a oh. landslide victory. Hello, Mr. Oh, hello, Mr. Bonaparte. He promises to heal divisions, impose order, and restore France to her former glory. Oh, it's there. Okay. The moderates fear the victory of the people more than that of the Bourbon troops. Francesco Crispi, Sicilian revolutionary. In Italy, the tumult continues into 1849. In the Papal States, the reforms of Pope Pius had seen him held up as an unlikely liberal role model. But escalating radicalism and violence, notably the assassination of his justice minister, Pellegrino Rossi, caused Pope Pius to flee Rome. In his absence, a Roman Republic is declared. It is led by Giuseppe Mazzini, the iconic figurehead of Italian nationalism, who's devoted his life to the unification of his homeland. But elsewhere, the Italian cause fares badly. Carlo okay. Alberto resumes his war with Austria, with disastrous consequences. At the Battle of Novara, Radetzky inflicts another heavy defeat. Carlo Alberto abdicates in favor of his son, Vittorio, Vittorio Emanuele, to avoid a Republican revolution. Sardinia. Twelve years later, he'll become the first king of a modern united Italy. Oh. In the south, okay. Ferdinand reverts to absolutist Palermo. rule and yeah, sends troops second. to Sicily yeah, who stamp Sicily. out the revolution. Then, to the dismay of liberals across Europe, French President Louis Napoleon sends troops to crush the Republic of Rome and put the Pope back on his throne. He has decided the support of French Catholics is more important to him than the fate of Italian Republicans. French forces are led by General Udino, son of the famous Marshal. Rome's defenders are led by Garibaldi. But despite skilled and courageous resistance, Rome is forced to surrender after a two-month siege. A two -month siege. That summer, okay. Radetzky also retakes Venice and puts an end to its republic. In March, the German National Parliament in Frankfurt had finally agreed on a constitution for a united Germany. There we go. It is to be a, a constitutional monarchy under an emperor. The like, is it the, constitu the constitutional monarchy? Is it going to be like, like a, a United Kingdom one? I don't know. Comment down below anything, because I'm I'm still processing this knowledge. <laughs> I'm still processing it this knowledge into my head and um, is this constitution monarchy would look like like in the UK or the great or in Great Britain I don't know what is the government of Great Britain in this time period but I don't know maybe maybe something different let's go guys. the man intended to play this role is Frederick William of Prussia okay so when but he, he declines, declines yeah, the declines. offer the plan is killed stone dead. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention In that. In public, he says it is impossible without the consent of the other German princes. Oh. In private, he says he would never accept a crown from the gutter, disgraced by the stink of revolution. Revolts in support of the national constitution break out in Saxony, the Palatinate, and the Grand Duchy of Baden. They are crushed by local forces assisted by Prussian troops. The Frankfurt Parliament itself is dissolved. What hope there had been for now? a united Germany under a liberal constitution lies in ruins. In Austria... But just you wait, just you wait, there will be someone very famous that will unify the German Empire. Just wait, just you wait. The new Emperor Franz Josef issues his own new constitution, reclaiming almost all political power. He also revokes all the liberal reforms passed by the Hungarian parliament. 
known as the April Laws. The April Laws. In response, Lajos Kossuth declares formal Hungarian independence, and the country begins an extraordinary campaign of military mobilisation. Hungarian commander General Gergely retakes Budapest. He then launches a bloody assault on Buda Castle, overpowering its Austrian garrison. In desperation, the Austrian Emperor travels to Warsaw to formally request military aid from the... Oh yeah, from Emperor of Russia, Nicholas. Uh, Emperor, Emperor Nicholas? Tsar Nicholas, there we go. Is this, this the father of Tsar Nicholas II? Yeah, maybe. Maybe he's the father of Tsar, Tsar Nicholas II. The last Tsar of Russia. Anyway. The Emperor of Russia. Russian troops have already moved into Moldavia and then Wallachia to put down the Romanian liberal revolution. Nicholas now agrees to send troops to Hungary to crush those he describes as the enemies of order and tranquility. Hungary faces an impossible strategic situation. They're, they are now surrounded by Russian troops and by uh, Austrian troops. Now what are they going to do? I don't know what's going to happen, but I, 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 the reason why I paused is because I just wanted to tell you folks that um, they're now surrounded and I just wanted, you know, just to try to I don't know. I just want to try to show it. Okay, so yeah, let's go see what's going to happen. Surrounded and outnumbered more than two to one, the combined onslaught is irresistible. The Hungarian oh. forces are driven south and finally forced to surrender. Yeah, because this actually happened too, but it's between uh, Serbia. Uh, Serbia surprisingly was strong against against uh, Austrian forces in World War One, and the reason why Serbia lo was removed or got beaten out was when Bulgaria joined uh, joined uh, what was this joined was it Bulgaria or Hungary um, Bulgaria what the oh you know um, Hungary was it Hungary or Bulgaria I'm sorry anyway Bulgaria when he they joined and they surrounded Serbia by many forces so that's that's how they were moved but comment down below anything more information please i want them and anyway, let's go in the aftermath around 120 hungarian politicians and army officers are executed so ends Bulgaria. hungary's Bulgaria. war of independence this is you wait no this is you oh. and you want to conquer the world of albion oh. here's what Beaten and humiliated, the fate of European democracy slipped from our hands. Pierre Joseph Prodhon, French Socialist. 1848 was a year like no other. A series of seismic political events following one upon another like falling dominoes. But what had the been domino achieved? Effect. <laughs> a British historian famously described 1848 as the turning point at which modern history failed, failed to, to turn. turn. And for all the euphoria of Europe's springtime of the peoples, by 1849, it seemed that the counter-revolutionaries had won everywhere. Yeah. But some gave so, so gains did endure, such as the abolition of serfdom in Austria and the popular vote in France though France became a little less democratic in 1852, after Louis Napoleon, Napoleon made himself Napoleon. emperor. Across Europe, governments modernised and paid more attention to economic and social issues, partly in response to the new challenges that had emerged from socialist... Yep, London 21st February 1848, Communist Manifesto was published, made by Mr Karl Marx himself and working-class politics. The causes of German and Italian unification had been defeated, but made giant strides and learned crucial lessons. Their goals would not be achieved by ideas alone, but the realities of force. In the words of Bismarck, 
The great questions of the day were to be settled not through speeches and majority decisions, but by iron and blood. Oof. It would oh be wars. God. I'm sorry. I I heard about that. I heard about that saying and may or let's say what you call that saying. Really, I'm sorry. I just love it. Um, I'm starting to love uh, Mr. Ardavon Bismarck. Uh, when I heard about him, when I learned some about him, I'm just I'm starting to to like him. You know, I'm starting to like this guy. You know, it's amazing you know okay like, i'm sorry for saying you know it's so it's just late okay it's been it's been like how long 30 minutes oh, let's just finish this. waged by powerful monarchies that united germany and italy 1871 there we go the legacy of 1848 germany. for good and ill would be felt for decades to come Anyway, uh, we're gonna end it there. Check out Epic History TV's channel. Check out 18, the 1848 Europe's Year of Revolution. Please check them all out in the description down below. That was a fantastic video made by him. Thank you for for not, um, <laughs> not copyright claiming this. I, I'm no, I'm just a reactor, but I'm here just to learn. I want to learn. So yeah, folks, thank you for the support. 400 subscribers. It's fantastic. And yeah, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe for more videos like this. After this, we might actually react to the Napoleonic Wars made by Oversimplified. I'll see you next video. Bye.